Hi, I'm quickly just going to take you through um, EBIP3 domain and the four questions, highlighting the areas where I have added in text from the feedback. If I can just show you the structure of this here, I have put them all together. We've got chapter one questions, references, chapter two, uh, chapter three, chapter four at the bottom here. I might want to tidy it up just a little bit there. Um, um, and then references. Now at the bottom there, I have included the forum responses to the questions. And I should be able to let you know how I have used those to inform and change my written pieces here. Here we go, let's come up to number one here. Uh, where I've added in is uh, the last paragraph here where I talk about being an effective teacher and building questions. The question that was asked of me was, um, well, that seems pretty obvious is important in education practice based on strong research evidence. And you outlined some reasons why in your post clearly. I am wondering how as an RTB, you can change teachers' practice based on strong research and show, and should we discourage practice that we know is not based on strong evidence? Uh, response is in the post at the bottom here for that, and possibly a couple of other areas through there. Uh, question two, what is professional inquiry and why is it an important professional practice RTLB? Uh, my response to this one was, Let's find it here. Chapter two, this is from Andrew Salisbury. Um, he talked about a situation where he had to think about um, inquiry and his, he found his perspective of it was challenged as he went through. Um, and I have taken that in response here. Um, why is professional inquiry? I've added through here as well, response to that one there. Um, and also up here, we talk about other areas to consider with professionals. We don't always have the answers or know to address the tricky questions that teachers and parents can ask. This was an important part of there. But being able to use inquiry at a time when we don't know opens up the opportunity for growth and also provides a valid evidence-based response that we can justify. I think justification is an important part there. Uh, take you down to number three. Why should whānau and children's views be listened to and respected? I loved the question response to this one here. Um, I think you include some key points here, particularly like your comments about uh, going away from the deficit model and uh, something that this is sometimes something that is important in order to use for us to engage in effectively with far now. Sorry, I get a little bit tired when I'm recording this. Um, and again, linking to questions to the treaty, just check the grammar. This one, reading in much direction, they talked about um, it was more contextual, um, sorry, it was more um, technical, uh, making sure my grammar was checked, checking page numbers through it there, and the response was prompted over here. Um, and this paragraph here about zooming into my own practice and being reflective on that um, was the piece that I added in for that part there. Now, in Chapter 4, I broke this down into a couple of questions there. Uh, why should teachers be informed? What is important to practice? And how does RTB play a role in this one here? Which I uh, think was a good question. Chapter 4 from Melody Wilson. Um, like the way I sorted the question in three parts there. Um, and provided a link that worked on reflective teaching saying reflective teaching is a vehicle through to inquiry teaching, which I had to agree with you, and I enjoyed her perspective on it. Um, and here we are here. I put about being a reflective practitioner added into it there. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good thought, and I liked the process. It took me in another direction. So that's the end of that. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed my little trip through the um, EBIP, I have enjoyed the subject and it's reflecting now that I see I got quite a bit out of this. Thank you.